This grinder changed the definition of what the ultimate coffee grinder for home coffee enthusiasts should look like. This is the Zerno Z1 grinder. And if you're here, the question you may be asking is, I keep hearing about this grinder, the Zerno. Is this the grinder for me? And I think the answer to that question is, it depends. I have two of them here, courtesy of my buddy Jake at Homebrew Coffee on Instagram, who was kind enough to loan them to me for this review. This one right here is is the launch edition, one of the very first Zernos that went out. And this one is one of the most recent ones, the V2. Comes in at about $1,200 US. And once you start to get into this price with coffee grinders, you should really stop asking yourself, what is the best grinder for the price? And the question that you should start asking instead is what is the grinder that will best deliver exactly what I'm looking for at the price? Because once you get into this zone, different configurations of these grinders will give you very different taste profile and end use results. So you don't just wanna go out and drop a bunch of cash on one if you don't know exactly what you're shooting for. I'll also say grinders at this price point are really getting into the territory of diminishing returns. You know, there are way cheaper grinders that you can get that will get you kind of 80% of the way there at a much lower price point. Now, the thing that the Zerno did really well and really differently as a higher end grinder was embrace this choose your own adventure style of grinder configuration in a whole cloth sort of way. Previous to grinders like this, you would see higher end grinders that used proprietary burr shapes and sizes, locked you into a very specific taste profile that was associated with a certain grinder. And what the Zerno Z1 did is it said, hey, there are a lot of really great burr sets out there in this 64 millimeter size. Let's let people choose what they want and let's give those burrs the best possible operating environment that we can. Now they married up that choose your own adventure philosophy with a very small footprint, a lot of different exterior finishes, and as far as grinders go, in this price point anyways, a competitive price compared to some of the other options that were out there. It is very small, as you can see. So if negotiating counter space is a dynamic and conversation in your family, there's gonna be a point for it right there. And as far as styling goes, it's kind of got this space age, Dieter Rams, Braun-esque style design that personally I really like. You can also get this optional road case with it, which as someone who will travel with their espresso grinder, I know that probably seems crazy to some of you, but that is a big appeal. And it's something that I wish more manufacturers would offer because being able to take a very high-end grinder with you on vacation, dump it into this road case, throw it in your trunk and pop it out whenever you get where you're going, that's a pretty cool factor that I'm personally into. Operation of these things is very simple. You take the lid off, you turn the grinder on, set it to your grind setting, dump your beans in and give it a slap on the top to knock any grinds out. Pull your cup out and make coffee, be it espresso or filter. It's really not complicated, no variable RPM. It's tuned to kind of run at what Zerno has identified as the ideal speed for this configuration. And how the coffee tastes and brews is going to vary wildly depending on what type of burrs you put into a grinder like this. And we're gonna come back to that. Let's go down one layer. The founder of Zerno is a guy named Vel, and he is kind of fanatical about precision engineering. He's very engaged with his customer base in a Discord server. They even link to it on their website. When you take the case off of the back of the Zerno, you can see the components inside and they almost seem like it's been designed rather than just kind of crammed in there from an engineering perspective. The grind markings on the front here are in micrometers rather than arbitrary steps. So you have a bit of an objective reference when you're comparing grind sizes to other people. And it also comes with with these set of like precision tools for you to take apart, clean, service your Zerno. So you really get the sense that this is like engineered with a very high degree of precision. And this is a trend that's gonna continue, we're gonna see here. And that's where I'm gonna move out of the, uh, this is generally how it looks and works. And I'm really gonna start speaking to the enthusiasts here. Now I review a lot of grinders. I don't think that's gonna be a secret to any of you. And one of the things that I always do when I get a new grinder is I test the alignment. Now, if you don't know what that means, these grinders use what's called flat burrs 
to grind up the coffee. There are these two discs that one of them will kind of rotate and you want those discs to be in as close alignment as possible. Because if one is not, it's gonna wobble a little bit as it's spinning around. And what that is gonna do is coffee that's coming out of the big gap side is gonna be larger than the coffee that's coming out of the little gap side. And you really want the grind to be as consistent as possible for the best cup. So when you're checking alignment, you know, this is something that a couple micrometers can make a big difference. So you always wanna get the alignment as close as possible. This grinder right here has been the best aligned grinder that I've ever received or tested. When I got it, I seasoned it, ran a couple kilos of coffee through it just to kind of get it settled. Then I performed an alignment test and it was perfectly aligned. And that's something that I see very, very, very rarely, especially that clean. Another way that you can check alignment on a grinder like this is you can compare what's called the chirp point to the burr lock point. The chirp point is when you're tightening the grinder and you hear those burrs just start to touch and the lock point you turn the grinder off and you keep turning the dial until it stops moving, that's burr lock. And in the case of this grinder, the distance between burr chirp and burr lock was in between five and 10 micrometers. That is absolutely crazy. I have never seen that tight of a tolerance on a grinder, especially out of the box. And this one, one of the very original ones, you know, this one has seen a good bit of use. This one is only 10 to 15 micrometers in between burr chirp and burr lock. To have that degree of precision across two different units, two different manufacturing cycles, one of them received just out of the box, that's pretty wild. And if you're an enthusiast, not having to worry about alignment, just having it be really great out of the box is really nice. Now, a couple other tests that I'll always run when I get a new grinder. One of them is for sound. So you always wanna see how loud is a grinder. And the Zerno is not a terribly loud grinder. So I was very happy with that. Another test that I'll always do is to test something called retention. And that's how much coffee tends to hang out inside of a grinder after you finish grinding. Now, after that big seasoning run that I did, I cleaned it out, measured all the grounds that were in there. There was 0.7 grams. 0.2 grams of that was actually in behind the rotating burrs and most of the other grounds that were in there, just the way they were sitting in there. I wouldn't really expect them to make their way out into your coffee on a regular basis. One other thing that I do, and this is a little intense, is I usually grind up green coffee, unroasted coffee, and you would never normally do that with a coffee grinder. It's a bit ridiculous, but I do it as a stress test. And in this case, the Zerno chewed right through it. So, you know, the drivetrain is obviously very robust, lots of power and torque in the motor. So that was fantastic. So I think it's about time we made some espresso. Okay, so that pulled great, and that was grinding about 115 micrometers from Burr Chirp. Mm. And the espresso is, mm. that's quite good. But before we get too much into taste profile, which is great, and performance in the cup, I wanna show you the secret sauce of the Zerno. In addition to that laser precise alignment that it has going on. It's also got a little something else going on in here. A couple other grinders use these as well. Just gonna get it opened up. This front comes right off, just like that. The burr comes out just like that. And you can see right here, it's got this coily looking thing with this groove running around the outside of it. This is called a pre-breaker and it serves a couple functions. Number one, as the beans are getting dropped in here, it's going to feed the coffee to the burrs at a very specific rate. As it's feeding them down there, it's also gonna jam them up against the walls of this chamber in here and start to break them up a little bit before they get to the burrs. Now, that's gonna to start to do the work of the burrs 
so that by the time they get here, they're already kind of a more ideal size to be ground up. And it's also gonna prevent all of those grounds from getting slammed up against that burr right away. Have them all spinning around in there and not able to actually get out. That's called re-grinding. And that's something that you want to avoid because it lowers the consistency of your particle size distribution. So because of those two factors, the prescribed feed rate and that pre-breaking action, you're getting an even higher particle uniformity rate, which is being accentuated by that perfect alignment. Now, before we get to these burrs, I do want to talk very briefly about some of the changes and updates that have been made between this one and this one. This one, the launch edition Zerno, has this white cable that's permanently attached. It's actually an Apple computer cable. It's pretty nice. This one has a removable cable, which I really like this anytime somebody includes this because if you want to get a different color, you want to get a different outlet kind, a different uh, length, you can do that for yourself. A couple other very small things. We have some somewhat minimal changes between the dosing cups. A little bit more of a significant change is this one is magnetic, where this one is not. Both of them have this magnetic exit chute. This one has a 3D printed insert with a smaller opening and this kind of new material and shape inside. All that is serving to minimize the static and the retention. It makes RDT less of a requirement. Still though, if you like to keep things clean, I am gonna recommend you use RDT with this grinder. That's that little spritz of water that you saw me do. And as far as changing the wood accents go, you know, they provide all these different finishes and this one is secured in here. These ones are very easy to change. So if you got a different look that you wanna go for, pretty simple and easy to customize. The launch edition came with uh, tools, this little RDT bottle and a brush, and this did too. One big difference though is since the launch edition came out, Zerno has actually started offering a blind burr configuration. And this is another thing that is really cool for all the enthusiasts out there watching. A blind burr basically means the screw holes that are used to mount the burr to the carrier have been moved around to the back of the carrier. And that opens up more surface, almost 9% actually, for more cutting area available on the burr. Now, if there are three big screw holes in this thing, as that turns around, the screw holes are gonna be doing a bit of cutting, which is not probably ideal. The blind burr configuration really allows you to have 100% cutting area on the burr. Very cool, not something that is really mainstream yet at this point. Now, let's talk about these burrs because this is something that if you're considering this grinder, this is an essential part of the conversation. There are a ton of 64 millimeter coffee burrs out there. Some of them are great at filter, some of them are great at espresso, some of them are somewhere in the middle. You get ones that across the whole range are at varying price points and they all have differences, some minute, some large in the actual flavor of the coffee that they produce. So if that's content you wanna see more of, you gotta let me know in the comments so that I can get it worked into my calendar. But as far as this grinder goes, both of them are using SSP HU burrs, high uniformity, and these burrs provide a really great espresso profile. They still give you enough body so that you feel like it's a nice thick espresso shot, but without leaving clarity on the table either. So it's a very nice middle ground, very nice burr, really great taste. I like this burr. You can also put a burr in here that really excels at filter coffee and is a nightmare to dial in for espresso. Now on top of trying to find your way through that burr selection process, Zerno is shortly gonna start offering different pre-breaker designs that break up and feed the beans in different ways so that you can really fine tune that flavor experience that you're looking for out of this grinder. And if you don't know how to get what you're looking for, you're gonna spend a lot of money on something that you may end up wanting to change later. Now on top of just the money, because these are all hand built in the US, you gotta place an order one, they're almost basically making them to order at this point. You have to join a wait list and you're gonna be waiting a while before you actually get your grinder. As of recording this video, there's only like 500 Zernos in the wild. I have two of them sitting right here in front of me. I kind of liken it to getting a guitar custom built for you. If you're just learning how to play guitar, you're probably not gonna go to a guitar maker and say, hey, 
make me a custom guitar. You're gonna to go to a music store, you're gonna get something in your price range, and that is probably gonna get you 80% of the way there. Then once you really know what you're looking for in an instrument, then you go to the guitar maker and you're able to make some informed decisions. So if you're in the first category, and you're still trying to figure out what it is that you want, I really am gonna encourage you to wait a little bit. Learn a little bit more, taste a lot. Don't jump into a gear upgrade. Maximize what you have already. If you do know exactly what you want, then you're probably gonna already know if the Zerno is the right grinder for you, and you probably even know what configuration you wanna put in it and what kind of pre-rakers you might even wanna try in it. So. Now I have to throw it back to you. This grinder changed the landscape of the types of things that home coffee enthusiasts can look for in a grinder. If it was you, what setup would you put in it? Would you do SSPs? Would you do a Mazerber? Would you do an HU, an MP? Let me know in the comments. And lastly, I'm always trying to make these reviews better. So if there's some specific information you wanna see in my reviews or something you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments and subscribe while you're at it. I hope your next cup of coffee is fantastic and we'll see you next time.